Now, many times broken and damaged items can make far more profit for us than ones that are working. So today we're looking at some broken and damaged items that can sell for some big bucks. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at some broken and damaged items that we routinely can sell for some major profit. Many times we'll do far better selling these broken or damaged than we ever would if we sold them in working condition or obviously in better condition. Now the main reason that is is because if they're not broken or not damaged, you're going to have to pay top dollar to get them because most people understand the value in a lot of these items. Most people, though, when something doesn't work or they plug it in, try it out, nothing happens, assume it's not worth anything. So the items we're going to look at right now are ones out there that most people will just bypass if they don't work, they're damaged or messed up. Now many times when I've been outsourcing, I've seen people try things out. They'll plug it in at a thrift store, a state sale, a garage sale, won't come on, and they'll just leave it be. Now, many of these items are very easily repairable. There's a lot of people out there these days that know enough electronics to repair much of these types of items for very little expense. So they can buy them still at a pretty good penny, repair them, turn around and resell them, and double their money as well. These sorts of items sell extremely well, even in broken, damaged condition. Lots of these sorts you can't get any other way. So even though this keyboard doesn't work here, it sold for almost 350 bucks. Plus shipping is extra as well. Now cameras is another area that we have done phenomenally well. Parts, pieces, broken or not, it doesn't matter. If it's the right camera, even a broken one can go for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It doesn't matter if the shutter works. It doesn't matter if pieces are missing. Just the body of some of these cameras with nothing else attached can go for hundreds, if not a thousand bucks or better. Especially like these expensive of D8500 Nikons. Any Nikon body I pretty much buy if it's the right version. Any of those sorts can sell for some phenomenal money. This one went for $300. It doesn't work. It's just for parts and pieces. Canon's the same way. Any of these expensive models, broken or not, will get you some good money. People do repair these just like any of the other items we'll be showing you today. Now, a big reason we do so well on broken versions of these sorts of things is there is hardly any return rate. If I send out a new one that works, one in good condition, somebody could mess with it, scam me, and send me back a hunk of junk. These are sold as parts only. They are broken. They are not declared as working from the very, very start of this transaction. So they can't come back after they get it and say it's not working. I rarely ever have a piece, a part, or a broken unit ever returned. I'm also paying so much less when they don't work. And the profit margins are still there. Vintage cameras are the same way. Many times someone will pick up a camera. They won't know the name Roly, for example, in this one, and will just leave it alone. There might be something broken, damaged, broken lens. It won't whine. Uh, it won't advance the film. All sorts of reasons I see people put cameras down at estate sales and other places that I go. Roly of any type I will buy no matter what if it's cheap enough. I have never ever had a problem selling a Roly which is a very fine quality German camera. It doesn't matter if it works at all. And as I said, pieces and parts sell extremely well also. So do lenses. We have sold a broken lens in the past with broken glass on the lens for over $300. It's something that someone could have repaired or repaired on their own. There are camera shops who fix up vintage and collectible items like this here and get them back into working order and then market them three, four times what they paid for them. Even though this person bought this piece here for $300 plus, they may be able to fix it repair it and turn around and still make three or four hundred dollars. That's why these are so great. GPS map units by Garmin and any of the other ones that are out there, even if they don't work, I can still sell them. The cords are worth some money as well. Even the units themselves many times can be repaired. Now a steel chainsaw is another example of those damaged items, even if it doesn't start. These items, the parts alone, are worth some pretty good money. Many cases, I can take things apart and sell them for more than if they worked even. So even if I bought a new item, something that I know still works like a reel-to-reel -reel player, for an example, 
I can take a reel-to-reel -reel player apart, sell the pieces, won't have to worry about expensive shipping, charge for shipping, and make more than if I sold the unit as a whole. And as well, when I do that, the parts and pieces won't have a return on them, but the whole unit may. It's a lot easier and safer to sell high-end stuff by the piece as opposed to the whole unit. Watches is another area that I do extremely well in. Usually at thrift stores at the checkout, there's a basket of broken watches there all of the time. This is a cheap Pulsar digital calculator watch. You will be surprised at what some of these sell for when they are working. These are hot items right now. Definitely a bowl. Be on the lookout for any day of the week. Every single one of these sorts of calculator watches from the 70s and 80s sells for some buku bucks. Now with watches, digital watches, most people assume do not carry a value. Almost always I can get a digital watch that doesn't work for a dollar or less almost any day of the week. Sometimes I can buy a whole bunch of them for just a few bucks just because they don't work. Now this is an Omega. Should recognize the name, I would hope, but these sorts of things still go for some good money. A non-working one here, over $300. This is probably a $10 worth of investment for somebody. Most of the time, these cheapo watches like this I can get for a dollar, maybe two at best, if it's a better or a vintage one. When these don't work, most people are going to come to the conclusion that trying to get them repaired is going to cost you a fortune. There's enough people, as I said, out there who know how to fix these. They can buy a lot like this recondition them, and then sell them individually. I'm fine with that, even if I sell a lot like this for just a few hundred dollars because I have almost nothing into it. Vintage electronics in general do extremely well. TVs are a good example here. Now, this is a portable one. It's vintage. It's from the 50s. It's the case that's important. People can repair these just like anything else out there. Many people will plug these sorts in when they're in the wild, say at a thrift store or something. It won't work, and they'll pass it up. Even broken, if it's the right version, the right case, the right looks to it, like this 50s version here, can still sell for over $200 plus shipping. There's also no way the buyer is going to be able to claim that it was damaged and doesn't work because of the way it was shipped, because it's being shipped as a non-working unit. Sony Walkmans is another example here. Most of them, even if they don't work, will get you 40 50 bucks. Now, this one here has a movie tie-in for Guardians of the Galaxy, hence the value. Most of the time when these units do not work, it's just a belt. And most people don't have a clue on that. You can buy a whole bunch of belts for just 5 or 10 bucks and repair a whole bunch of these. They're simpleton easy to repair. These aren't like the modern day electronics that have specialty screws that you need specialty bits just to take them apart. These are simpleton easy fixes for the most part. So that's why something like this, even broken, will sell for 300 bucks. Car parts in general is another example. This is a carburetor. It still looks to be in excellent condition. No way to know if it works or not on these sorts of parts. These can be rebuilt. These are expensive to begin with. All sorts of car items do extremely well, even broken. We've done very well with car tail lights, the lenses for them. Now, many of the newer lenses have LED lights in them. They're very expensive to buy if they're working. So you can spend a few dollars on a cheapo part that may not look like much, but as long as the plastic's not broken, say in a lens, the LEDs can be fixed. You will find people buying them off of eBay for hundreds of dollars to replace a part in their car. The LEDs are just a few cents for the most part, but those lenses in working order can cost 500 to 1000 bucks. So many of the parts, even though they may not be in technically working order now, can easily be fixed by the right person, so they still garner some incredible amount of money on eBay. And as I said earlier, vintage electronics do extremely well, even if they don't turn on. Now, this is an older unit. Many of these sorts have fuses in them. So if you plug them in and they don't turn on, it may just be a simpleton dollar or two dollar fuse. And if you don't know that, you're going to pass these by. Many of these early ones from the 70s, 80s, and even before that can sell for some phenomenal money because they're easily repaired. doesn't have a bunch of technical skills to repair many of these units here. That's why this one sold for over $600 and it's not working. Now, toys is another area that I can do extremely well with, broken or not. Most people should already know that, but this is a stomper. If you don't know what stompers are, look them up on eBay, on Terapeak, and see what ended ones sold for. Phenomenal value in here. Now, these are like pullbacks where they actually have a motor and they'll, they'll run down the track and all. 
they can be repaired. There are people out there that resurface these, repair them, put them back into service, and off they go. This one sold for 260 bucks with a ton of bits. These aren't one-offs. There's a bunch of these. Stompers are a hot collectible item, almost comparable with some of the early red lines as well, Hot Wheel red lines. Here's just another example, just to show you that these things are out there, working broken or not, they sell for some phenomenal money. Now, many people out there don't even know what a stomper is to begin with, so this is an area you do need to dig into and understand the values of these sorts of things. Train engines, toys in general, any of these sorts can go for some phenomenal money. Some of these are expensive. Train engines in general can run over $1,000, a couple thousand dollars for a brass one. So even if they don't work, I have still been able to get some good money out of these. And here's another item you will run into. This is a projector, digital projector. It can plug into a computer or whatever else you may want. Many times the bulb is shot. Somebody will plug it in. It doesn't work. They'll leave it and just pass it by. Bulbs on these can also cost hundreds of dollars as well, but the units themselves with the bulb may be able to sell for 800, 1,000 bucks. Now here's a lot of seven Apple HomePods. These are smart speakers basically, or none of them work. These are probably returns someone bought from a pallet. They still were able to sell them for $352. So regardless in many cases of what the item is, there is somebody out there who will fix it. They'll buy a bunch like this, they'll fix them one by one, and then market them separately. Lots of money can be made if you know how to repair these. Accessories, parts, pieces for PCs, laptops, the whole works can also sell. This is a non-working graphics gaming card, and it's still sold for 550 bucks. Now, this one has the code in there. What's wrong with this? So if you know how to repair this sort of thing, you already know what's wrong with it. It's an easy fix. Many of the times, these sorts of gaming cards can cost a couple thousand dollars. Game Systems is another example here. Any of them. PlayStations 3s, 4s, 5s. Broken or not, you can sell them on eBay. You can sell them all over the place. They do extremely well. Most of the time, too, you can buy them cheaper at a garage sale. No, it doesn't work. I've seen them thrown out or donated all the time when they don't work, and you can still find them out there right now. This has the box with it, too, so this is an added bonus for this one here. Obviously, the box itself is worth something on its own. Now, vintage computer and electronics do extremely well also. This is an Apple Macintosh. It doesn't work. These are hot items right now, even in non-working condition. There are many people out there who love these sorts of things and will fix them back up. They can even repair the coloring to the plastic. There's a special process that will restore the bright white color to the plastic. Most of the electronics in these can be fixed fairly easily as well. Now the old bulk units, the big massive units, most people just assume right off the bat that they're not worth anything and pass them up. Now even if they don't work, they still go for some phenomenal money. There's not many of these left. Most of them have been discarded. So even though this is only from 20 or so years ago, 30 years ago at best, they are still highly collected just because of the sheer lack of quantity of them out there anymore. Most of these are going to recyclers and places like that. And just one more example. This is a Commodore Amiga. It's another one of those long forgotten computers. It's an A3000 series. It's a big, huge, bulky unit. It takes the giant size floppies, the whole works. Again, these are repairable. People do mess with these. There are museums out there that even have working examples of all of these sorts of things too. Now lastly, I want to touch on just a couple items that if you're not into collectibles, you may assume carry no value. Now this is Amazing Fantasy 15. Any comic book guy out there who's been into comics for any length of time should know exactly what this is. This is a coverless copy of the first appearance of Spider-Man. Even without a cover, these can sell for ten, fifteen, even twenty thousand dollars. Now, when I'm out there sourcing, I look at every comic book without a cover every time. I constantly walk behind people who will look through real quickly, see no cover, and just ignore the rest of those comics. Many times people tore the covers off and stuck them on the wall, and these might be all what's left from their collection. The value is there. These are things that I can pick up for a couple dollars. Maybe not Amazing Fantasy 15, but I have picked up some very valuable comics just because everybody else assumed they carried no value without the cover. Another example, this is X-Men 1 with no cover. $2,500. Don't discount stuff because it's missing part of it. If you know what you're looking at, you know what you're looking for, you can find the diamond in the rough, even the damaged and missing piece items like this. Here's one that I can almost guarantee you everybody would have passed up who's not a specific comic person. This is Tales of Suspense 39. It's the first app of Iron Man. 
not only is it missing the cover and in his terrible condition, it's got a chunk missing out of the entire book. All the way through, it's just in terrible condition. Now, people will do a recreation cover, or in some cases, the insides will be damaged, but the cover will still be in nice condition. People will put these back together. I grab every one of these sorts I can, as long as it's a vintage. Most vintage 40s comics, even 50s and into the 60s, without a cover can still be worth a few bucks. Here's Incredible Hulk 181 with no cover, the first appearance of Wolverine. It's still sold for hundreds of dollars. So in this case, again, if you're not paying attention, you don't know your characters, you may miss this. The covers usually tell you what's going on with them. And if you're not up on your comic book issues, you're going to be walking by some that could be worth hundreds of dollars just just because you're assuming that without a cover it's not worth anything. Just one more example, this is Captain America number 13. This is an early Golden Age one. It's missing the cover, it's torn, it's even missing four pages, and it's still sold for over 400 bucks. Now condition isn't everything in collectibles like this. Obviously, if it was in good condition, it would sell for a ton more money, but even damaged, destroyed almost like this one here, it's still sold for over 400 bucks. And one last aspect, this is a cover minus the record. So in many cases, you can find record covers, records destroyed, it's broken, it's damaged, it's scratched, whatever the case may be, but the cover itself can still be worth money. The same goes for the record. Many times you may find a record without the cover. So all of these sorts of either damaged or missing parts, we still purchase and we still sell for some good money. Just the cover from this album here went for over $1,400. This is a very well sought after one, butcher block cover, the whole works. You do have to know a little bit about this sort of thing, or at least have some good skills when researching when you're out in the wild. It's a Beatles cover. You should know enough. This is just one example of this, as were the comic books. There's even modern day comic books that are minus covers that will still sell for hundreds. There's even modern day records. If the record's cracked and you have the cover, the picture sleeve, that picture picture sleeve in many cases could be worth more than the record itself. So be on the lookout for these sorts of things. Don't discount things because they don't work, they don't turn on, they're broken, damaged, or missing parts. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Monster Magnet. The most powerful force in the universe. The strangest power ever known. The great strength of Monster Magnet is now in your hands. Wemo's new Monster Magnet lifts up to 20 pounds of steel. A magnet so powerful, just try its strength. It's magic. It's amazing, invisible fun. Monster Magnet lifts almost anything. You can attract and grab steel objects even underwater. With the grip of Monster Magnet, pull a trike, pull a wagon. No, no, don't pull that car. Have fun, say. Hey, I want Monster Magnet. Make sure it's the original Monster Magnet. Sold everywhere by Whammo.